Welcome to the Intelligent Vehicle Gateway installation video. This video provides an overview of how to install an Intelligent Vehicle Gateway system, plus system verification and troubleshooting highlights. If you have questions that are not addressed in this video, please refer to the installation and troubleshooting guide for further assistance. You can download a PDF version of the guide or order a hard copy from the customer portal located online at customer.omnitracks.com. The Intelligent Vehicle Gateway, or IVG, system contains four components. The IVG, a power I.O. cable, a RAM mount and backing plate, and the IVG holster. To perform the installation, at minimum, you must have crimpers, diagonal wire cutters, wire strippers, Phillips number two and slotted screwdrivers, number 10, 20, and 25 Torx drivers, a volt ohm meter, flush cutters, and a flashlight or drop light. Remember, additional tools may be needed to remove dash panels for cable routing or if you install optional accessories. If purchased through a channel partner, IVG units must be activated through the Omnitrax customer portal before you install it on a vehicle or take it to a service center for installation. Log in to the customer portal and follow the activation instructions 24 hours in advance of installation. As with any installation, it's extremely important to comply with your company's best practices regarding safety. Use the proper personal protective equipment including eye protection, hearing protection, and steel-toed boots. Also, when entering or exiting the vehicle, maintain three points of contact to avoid a fall. Finally, make sure you install the equipment in compliance with all applicable laws and do not install it where it may, at any time, interfere with the operation of the vehicle or the driver's ability to see pedestrians or the road. We'll begin the installation by finding a location for the IVG. The IVG should be within arm's reach of the driver but do not place it where it obstructs the driver's field of vision, distracts the driver from the driving task, or interferes with the driver's operation of controls or instruments, or blocks the deployment of an airbag. Consider the truck owner's installation location preference and whether this is a team or a single driver before you begin the installation. It's now time to install the IVG. You need both the IVG holster and ram mount for this step. The ram mount attaches to the dashboard using the provided backing plate and screws for support. First, remove the section or sections of the dashboard to gain access to a flat surface where the backing plate attaches behind the dash. Verify that there is nothing behind the mounting surface that might be damaged by drilling holes. Using the backing plate as a template, mark the location of the holes with a felt tipped marker. Then drill quarter inch diameter holes in the selected surface. Attach the ram mount ball joint to the dash using the supplied 832 screws, lock and flat washers, and backing plate. Then attach the other ram mount ball joint to the IVG holster using supplied screws and lock washers. The supplied screws for the holster are one half inch long. Do not use screws that are too long or they will protrude through the holster. Finally, join the holster side ball joint to the dash side ball joint using the ram mount arm. To adjust the mount, loosen the knob and move the holster to the desired position then tighten the knob. Be sure the knob is loosened prior to making adjustments. Snap the display into the holster by placing the bottom into the lower holster tabs and then push the top into the upper holster tab. It will snap into place. Next, we'll install the IVG Power I.O. cable. The IVG Power I.O. cable connects to the truck's diagnostic connector to provide power, truck ignition information, and the necessary engine data for the IVG system. There are multiple IVG cables available depending on the truck type, model, and year. Those cables are 
a 9-pin flange used on most 2006 and newer trucks, a 6-pin used on most 2005 and older trucks, a 9-pin screw-on nut used on late model Pac-R, Kenworth, and Peterbilt trucks, OBD2 style used on Volvo Mac trucks with Volvo or Mac engines manufactured in 2013 and later. Hino used on late 2011 year and newer Hino trucks. 9 pin Type 2 connector used on 2016 and newer model trucks with green diagnostic connectors. Refer to the installation guide for details on your truck's cable needs. Remember, light duty vehicle installations still require the B and BOBD2 streamer box. If the IVG is in the holster, remove it now. Before installing the IVG power IO cable, verify that the truck's ignition is off. Then remove and push back the existing truck diagnostic connector. Verify that the connector is clean of debris and there are no bent pins. Place the unused end of the power I.O. cable into the truck's original diagnostic plug location. Attach the power I.O. cable connector to the truck's diagnostic connector. Verify that the outer ring is twisted and clicks into place. Then pull test the connector. Next, route the power I.O. cable to the IVG's location. To adhere to the ELD mandate, allow enough slack in the display cable so that the IVG reaches both the driver's side and passenger side windows. Next, remove the number 10 Torx screws from the cable connector cover on the back of the IVG display and connect the power cable to the IVG. Listen for a click as you attach the connector, indicating that it latched solidly. Replace the connector cover and secure any excess cable. Ensure that excess cable is secured and does not interfere with the operation of the vehicle. Cable should not cause a tripping hazard. Add a tie wrap strain relief to the IVG cable where it comes out from under or behind the dash so it can't be pulled out further. The final step of the IVG installation is to verify the system is functioning correctly. Start the vehicle's engine and check the LEDs on the side of the display. When operating normally, all three LEDs blink blue. Next, tap this arrow to get to the system button, then tap the system button. On the diagnostic screen, tap the run all button and confirm that you see the appropriate green check marks. If the test passes, a green check mark displays. If the test fails, a red X displays. For the IVG to be ready for use, at minimum, green check marks must display next to cellular signal strength, cellular end-to-end, -end, GPS fix, and core data items. When the run all test is acceptable, send a message from the IVG. Go to the IVG's outbox to verify that a green check mark displays, indicating that the message was received. When you complete these tasks, system verification for this unit is done. You may need to troubleshoot if the core data items do not pass the run all test with a green check mark. To troubleshoot an item, highlight the item, then tap the details button. Help displays at the bottom of the screen. This concludes the installation of the IVG. Remember to refer to the installation and troubleshooting guide for detailed information on installation and troubleshooting procedures, as well as all cautions and warnings. Information on obtaining additional assistance is also contained in the guide. For more information on the Omnitrax IVG, please visit us on the web at customer.omnitrax.com.